Alright, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you guys are new here. Now, you guys saw a few weeks ago, I went ahead and did a huge aquarium unboxing where I unboxed stuff from Amazon, aquarium co-op, and some plants from the dollar store. Now, in that aquarium co-op unboxing, to be specific, I ordered three live plants. Upon unboxing them, one of them had a slight variation from the actual picture on the website. It really wasn't that big of a deal. I made that clear. I went ahead and gave my final thoughts in that video, mentioning multiple times that shipping plants is hard. These variations are to be expected. It's really, really hard to order a plant online and have that plant be the exact same as the picture because plants vary, plants grow, leaves die off. Shipping is a whole nother thing, to be honest plants take a beating through shipping. But the plants I received were packaged really well. They had no algae and they're all still alive and growing amazing. However, based on that video, Corey from Aquarium Co-op, I'm sure you guys know who that is, went ahead and reached out through my email, which if you guys ever wanna email me, by the way, there's an email down below, you guys can totally do that. And the moral of the story is he emailed me apologizing for that, which as I kinda of mentioned in the video, the plant's not looking perfect. It really didn't mean that much to me. It kinda of just, it is what it was. There wasn't anything I really wanted to do about it. I wasn't gonna be that person reaching out to customer service because once again, it was like an $8 plant. Like it's really not that big of a deal. So he went ahead and offered a refund or a replacement, which I didn't really need. I let him know that I was super thankful that he reached out and that I really, really appreciated it. However, I politely did declined um, getting a new plant or a refund because I didn't want to waste anyone's time over an $8 plant. However, what I have below me now is going to be part two to that aquarium co-op unboxing. So Corey went ahead and I guess selected a couple items for us to unbox and check out today. As you can see, here is the aquarium co-op box. Um, this is going to be like a little mystery box. I didn't order any of this stuff, so I'm not quite sure what's exactly in here. I peeked a little bit at the email I saw, but I didn't read any further because I actually wanted this to be a surprise that I could open on camera. I've got my razor blade right here. We're gonna cut this open. This is a pretty good sized aquarium co-op box. I will say that. In the last order, I ordered about 105-ish dollars worth of stuff and it came in two boxes. So if you do wanna see the original video, I would recommend you checking that out first. Check out all the stuff I got in that video and then we can come back here and look at our little aquarium co-op mystery box. Well, I already have it open and without further ado, let's get started. Oh, things already falling. Okay. We'll just take this packing material out. Uh, here's the packing slip. Not even gonna look at that. Oh, it also just fell. And here's everything so far, but I'm just gonna grab the first two things I see on top, which are these stickers. So uh, the last one we got in the first aquarium co-op box was the Cardinal Tetra. Today, it looks like we got Murphy the puffer fish. Oh, there we go and a little fancy guppy. So as you just saw, there's a lot of variety going on in this box. Um, the first thing that I see right on top is something I've actually, I almost ordered this on my first aquarium co-op order, but I didn't because I think it was out of stock for a hot second. But this is the aquarium co-op fry food. It's hard for you to see, but it's like this super fine powdered fish food. If you guys watched my last video where I walked you through all my aquariums, you saw that we have three breeding tanks, the cherry shrimp breeding tank, the molly breeding tank, and the guppy breeding tank, and all of those baby fish and shrimp are gonna love this little powdered food. We have a little topper right here. This is a squeeze bottle. Think of it like a ketchup bottle. You squeeze a little bit into the aquarium. I've never tried this before, but I'm super excited to test this out. The next obvious thing in this box is this Murphy box right here. I'm not sure what this is. Let's pull this out. Okay, so this is an aquarium co-op sponge filter, as we can see right here. Um, I've used sponge filters in the past. I will probably keep this one nice, fresh, and clean for springtime. When it starts to warm up, I wanna breed some fish outside, and I always use sponge filters in those tanks. I've done it before in the past. Uh, I think I set up a 29 gallon tank last time with a little sponge filter. When it gets warm outside, that warm temperature in my area is perfect for breeding fish, so I love to set up little tanks and ponds outside. Uh, so pulling this out of the box, it looks like there's a nice coarse sponge on here. A nice weighted base so it's not going to float away. So this is the medium sponge filter, which does around a 20 gallon tank. Uh, you hook an airline right there and super easy aquarium filtration. Moving right along, this little thing labeled fragile is an aquarium co-op mug. So I'll unwrap this real quick. And just like that, a little aquarium co-op mug. Super cute little mug. I love the green color. I mean, that's their brand colors, but it's a cute little coffee mug or whatever liquid you want. Next up, oh, okay, is the Aquarium Co-op's Easy Iron. This is an iron supplement. I don't use too many supplements in my aquarium. However, I have heard that adding iron to your aquarium can help with unwanted algae. I have some issues with algae in my 36 gallon tank, so I'm definitely gonna give this a try. 
and see exactly kind of how it works because supposedly it can inhibit algae growth as well as assist in plant growth. You only dose one pump per 10 gallons and do it around once a week just to take things slow. So that's easy iron for you. I also got this little uh, airstone. This is a Zis airstone, which actually Zis is the same brand who made the Brian Trip hatchery I got in the last video. Uh, as you can see, there's these little sponges in there and those are basically spare parts that allow you to replace the little discs that are already in there. So you basically have an airstone that should last a long, long time. This right here is aquarium co-op airline tubing. Um, the only airline tubing I've used in the past is like the plasticky clear stuff that's a pain to work with and it gets hard over time and it's just not fun. So I'm actually gonna rip this open and see what this is all about. So it's this super nice silicone. It's like a soft black silicone. Um, super flexible as you can see and it's black meaning it will blend into your aquarium a thousand times easier. I love using black backgrounds on my aquarium. My turtle tank has a black background, my reef tank has a black background, and some of my other tanks in other rooms all have black backgrounds. So this tubing right here, no matter what tank I use it on, it will blend into the background perfectly. Next up is a Murphy the Pufferfish aquarium hat, which if you don't know, Murphy is the mascot of aquarium co-op pretty much. Um, a little snapback hat right here, cute little piece of merch. I don't know, what do you think? Do I look good in hats? What do I think about this? Now I know you just saw me unbox a ton of cool aquarium stuff, but this right here is arguably what I'm most excited for. Like, okay, this is a towel for starters. And when I tell you, I did not set this up for like camera or anything, but less than six inches away from where I'm filming right now is the original aquarium co-op towel. Um, it sits on this hook right here, right there. That little command hook is where this towel is always hanging. It's my go-to towel for literally anything. Anytime I get my hands wet in the saltwater tank, the turtle tank, anything around here, I constantly use this towel. It's taken a beating. There's some super glue spots on it from when I was gluing plants, but it has been through the washing machine so many times. It's held up great. I use this towel constantly, but I finally get a new one now, which I'm super excited for. We'll have to see how this one lives up compared to the other one. It's a super nice fabric though. It's definitely different than the waffle weave microfiber towel I had but I cannot wait to see how this works on absorbing some water. I will say the one thing I do miss on this towel is the hook. The original aquarium co-op towel has this cute little hook right here, which I always use to hang it on that command hook. So I guess I need to find a way to hang my cute little towel. Well, I guess it'll hang like this. It does look a little bit bigger, which is great for drying hands or aquarium glass, which is also something I have to do with a lot. Believe it or not, having a good towel does make the world of difference in your aquariums. I'm not trying to be like a salesperson that you have to buy this special towel, but there's a lot of good towels out there. And I will say a towel nearby, like where you're working in your aquariums is always a lifesaver. I, I swear. Well, I guess if I'm gonna get so hype over this towel, I am gonna need to make sure that it works. And oh, sure does. And just like that, 10 out of 10 aquarium co-op items later, that's my aquarium co-op mystery box. I'm super excited to try everything out and everything will definitely be put to good use if you didn't watch Sunday's video on my uh, 10 fish tanks and two ponds. Um, you know we have a lot of fish around here. I went ahead and set up the sponge filter with the Never Clog Airstone right here. This is the recommended way to set it up for maximum flow rate. And then we'll stick the other piece of airline tubing right down there. Let me go ahead and slide the sponge on snap the little air stone into place. And just like that, sponge filter is all set up. Now we just gotta wait for the weather to warm up a little bit so I can start breeding some more fish outdoors. And then we can really test this sponge filter out. So if you guys don't wanna miss the new fish breeding project once the weather starts to warm up, do not forget to subscribe with those post notifications turned on so you get notified as soon as I upload a new video. And also, if you have a favorite live bear or fish you want me to try breeding outside this summer, let me know down in the comments below. And we'll just see what happens. I guess we'll just have to wait for the weather to warm up a little bit. I guess the official outro just disappeared somehow, but I just wanted to say once again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you do want to check out everything I got in the part one of this video where I first unboxed some aquarium co-op stuff, make sure you click that little i card and it will take you straight to the first part of this video series, I guess you could say. But once again, that is just about it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and good bye.